it's the Arabian chicken tikka, I don't know, pita bread and some mashed potatoes. I think I'm gonna keep having this for the rest of the IPL for lunch every day. The thing is that I can't eat as much as I want because my metabolism is very slow. If I eat a little off limit, I, I can see the difference in my body. But even then, in my limitations, I try and enjoy as much as I can because I am a big foodie. It's sort of a keto diet, but um, if I want to eat something, I go ahead and eat it. If I want to eat a donut, I won't have a dozen or two dozens. I'll go ahead and have one donut, which will like keep me sane. So yeah, and I'm not really following a very strict diet. I like to have some good meat before the game. And between the game, I think I don't really feel hungry because I'm so focused in the match. I don't really eat much. Mostly, I do mobility sessions in the morning because we have practice like at three or four. So I don't really like to stress myself up before practice. But then if I had to work out, I think I go for a run at the beach. Uh, that's very helpful because it's really hard to do sprints on the sand because it like absorbs your, your feet and you know, you have to push through it. So I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. I wake up, do my mobility, go for a run on the beach, rest for a while and then go, go to practice and then train there. So yeah, that's about it. You will have so a we're going to change the lunch timing to start from 11.30 till departure, which will be around 2 o'clock. Nutrition is the, it underpins everything around performance. I think without it being addressed properly, then performance is, is a non-starter, really, and recovery is a non-starter. So anybody who wants to perform at this level consistently, remain injury free, as well as have uh, positive long-term health outcomes, you have to address the nutrition side of sport. They did a really popular uh, sweet potato um, and barley salad at the ground the other day. The boys really liked that. The yeah. tomato soup. Yeah, we can do a roast chicken yes. with uh, mashed potato. All the diets for our players are based on, on blood markers because unless you know the physiology on the inside, then you don't know what you're fueling. Are they responsive to carbohydrates? Are they uh, insulin resistant? Um, do they have uh, blood glucose issues? Do they have uh, a poor lipid profile? Do they have a poor hormone profile? Uh, is their system inflamed? All these things are critical to performance and recovery. And then you've got to look at it in the context of who you're delivering that nutrition plan to. We also need to assess them as individuals um, from within their communities as well. So even within India, there are certain cultures that uh, behave very differently on different diets. So that all needs to be considered as well. Then we want an Indian non-veg dish. So fish molly, roast chicken with mashed potato. One, uh, a portion of uh, macaroni cheese, margarita pizza, with no tomatoes on top. Just the sauce. Yeah. And dessert, sir? What sugar dish. for your people? Yeah, that cake you can do. Carrot cake? Or yeah. Yeah. Carrot cake. And then when it comes to the day-to-day -day menus, particularly on match day, uh, yes, we need to consider those parameters, but we also need to consider things like anti-inflammatory. So the majority of the menus that we work with are what we call anti-inflammatory menus. So there'll be nothing on that menu that will cause their systems to become inflamed because inflammation is the source of all disease and inflammation is the source of injury and it's also the source of poor recovery. Fitness means a state of physical well-being, whereas health means a state of physical, emotional, psychological and social well-being. So you might be able to lift heavier weight, you might be able to do 5 kilometers, but if you are just piled up with a lot of stress, you are not a healthy individual. When you talk about warm-ups, I follow a protocol called as RAMP, R-A-M-P. So when you follow this RAMP protocol, you are basically getting your body from a dormant state to a very active state. 
R stands for raise your body temperature, raise your heart rate. A stands for activations. So you activate the muscles which are dormant. Then M stands for mobility. You start doing some dynamic work, dynamic mobility, like leg swings, side leg raises, side bends, all those kind of things. And P stands for potentiation. You have to do exactly the stuff that you will be doing in a game or in the gym at a lesser intensity. So if you'll be sprinting on the ground, you should be doing some sprint work at 70, 80, 90% of your intensity. Catapult definitely helps us give the data what we require to manipulate the intensities which we need to train him on the ground or in the gym. It gives us uh, the duration, how longer he has run and what is the distance that he has covered for that entire workout or for the entire game. So I know what his fastest speed is and if I have to warm him up, what speed I should be working him at, at 70, 80 and 90 percent intensity. Okay. 